In a previous video, we have talked about five different attributes of engineering quantities. Their names or the symbols, values, dimension, units, and significant digits. We talked about the first four before. Let's talk about sig digits and how they relate to engineering calculations. To motivate that discussion, let me present you a very simple example. So here is a picture of Usain Bolt when he won the World Championship in 2009. His average speed could be calculated on the basis of the distance that he traveled and the time it took him to run that race. So the clock actually is showing 9.58 seconds. There are only two digits after the decimal and we know that he ran at a distance of 100 meters. So if you want to compute the average speed, it's just a question of plugging it into the simple formula of distance traveled over time. So we have 100 meters and we have the time as 9.58 seconds. And I put these two numbers in my calculator and do the division and I get a lot of digits after the decimal. Let's say I pick a few and I write this as my answer. Or I can convert into miles per hour and I get 23.34968684 miles per hour. Now you look at this answer and, and you begin to question, well, if there is anything wrong with this answer, okay? What could be potentially wrong with this answer? Well, first thing that strikes you in, in face is that you have only three digits for both numerator and denominator in the input quantities, while your final answer is reporting not many digits compared to what you have in the input. So somehow it seems as if our answer is more accurate than the information provided to us. So we'll find out if there is anything wrong with that. Here is another example. Let's say we want to compute the force uh, applied on an object of mass m and acceleration. So we know the mass is 2.5 kilogram, acceleration is 1.26 meters per second square. We plug these two numbers in here and I and I do the, the, the calculation, multiply them, and I write my answer as 3.09 Newton. Okay. Now the question is, is this okay? Now it doesn't look as bad as was the case over here, but you know the question is, do we really know whether this is a right this is the right way to write this answer or not? Okay, so we'll find that as well. So let's first understand something about the numbers. There are two kinds of numbers out there. We have exact numbers. The exact numbers are something like number of students in a class, number of hands and legs, number of legs, or even the unit conversion factor within the same unit system. So this is important. Within the same unit system, the conversion factors are considered to be exact. So if you go from one unit system to another and use a conversion factor, let's say you were going from uh, Newton to pound force, Newton is a unit of force in an SI system uh, or metric system, while uh, pound force is a unit in the USCS or, or English system. So in that case, if you use a conversion factor, that is not considered to be an exact uh, exact number, okay? But within the same unit system, like going from meters to centimeter, this is all within the metric system, the, f the number 100 over here is considered to be an exact number. And then you have inexact numbers, which are often measured from, you know, measuring instruments or devices, or they are values that are computer in a computer program or on your calculator. So you have inexact numbers. So if when you go from one system to another, let's say from kilogram to pound mass, you use this conversion factor and that's also considered to be an inexact number. So there are two kinds of numbers out there, okay? So how do we measure the quality of a number? The quality of, the measure of a number is really measured by two things. One is the precision, the other is the accuracy. So the accuracy, as the name implies, basically tells you how closely uh, a measured value would agree with the correct value. So this is a measure of really the truthfulness, okay? Um, the other is a precision, which basically tells you something about how closely the individual measurements would agree with each other. So it's a measure of reproducibility, okay? So something could be done at a high precision, but maybe, maybe you know, less accurate, or something could be very accurate, but could be low precision. So here's an example. So this is an example where I have the bullseye, right? And a shooter is basically shooting into this bullseye and finds that, you know, hits the four spots over here, the four black spots that you can see, okay? Clearly they're off from the center, so, they're not so off from the center, so they're high accuracy, but they're clearly low precision because they're all dispersed from each other. So, you know, they're far apart from each other. On the other hand, the second picture on the right, you can see that all of these, um, you know, four dots are close to each other, which means you have high precision of shooting, but you have low accuracy because you're far off from the bullseye, from the center of the bullseye. So which one of these two would be more acceptable in a given situation? Well, that depends. So if let's say you have an instrument that is constantly producing high precision measurements, but they are not very accurate, it could be a calibration problem. So you recalibrate it and now you could get something that was high precision and, and highly accurate as well. So that would be definitely desirable. 
Now, the notion that relates to these qualities of the numbers is called significant digits. And this is a tool that, that has been created to really measure the quality of a number. And, and essentially what it does is it basically tells you how many digits in a, in a reported number would be reliable or correct in the light of all the limitations that exist in the input data okay, or in your computation. So whenever we make measurements, you're always allowed to have one digit that is estimated. So for example, we're looking at this scale over here, okay? And let's say, you know, I find that something is of uh, length where, you know, the end point is, I don't know, let's say between, you know, here, okay? So that's bit basically, so let me draw this a little bit bigger. So here is number three, here is number four, and that's the midpoint, so this is clearly 3.5. And then I have, you know, 3.6, I have 3.7, right? So let's say something is as long, you know, starting here, uh, started over here, you know, starting at basically one and ends somewhere here, okay? So it's somewhere between 3.6 and 3.7. So this is 3.6, this is 3.7. So between 3.6 and 3.7. So what would you say the length is? You could say it's 3.65, okay? 3.65 centimeters. So. Now, this last digit over here, 5, is really estimated because this could be 3.66. Somebody could say this is 6.667. So this last digit over here is basically estimated. And you're allowed to do that. You can estimate one digit. And that means that it also tells you what would be the limits. Okay? So you could say, well, if you report number as 3.65, you could say this is plus or minus 0 0.01. Okay? So the last digit is estimated. So that's basically one uh, hundredth of a place. So that would be plus or minus 0 0.01. So you could give your answer as 3.65, somebody could say 3.66, which is all okay, because this is all in plus or minus 0.01. Now let's look at a few more examples. So let's say we have a beaker and we are trying to measure the volume of the fluid in this beaker. You can see that the level over here is between 40 and 50, right? So this is 50 over here, okay? So we could say this is 47, 48, and the last digit is going to be estimated. So this is plus minus one ML. So somebody could say 46, 48, and both of them would be okay. Then we have a graduated cylinder. For a graduated cylinder, we have the level that's between 36 and seven, 36 and 37, that's 36 line, that's 37 line. So we could say this is 36.5 plus minus 0 0.01 because the last digit is estimated and the last digit is in the one tenth of a place. So that would be the error for you. For a burette, which is a little bit more accurate, we have 20 and we have 21, and now this is going down. So this is 21, 21, uh, 20.1, 20.2, 20.3, 20.4. So this is between 20.3 and 20.4. We could say this is 20.38, and since the last digit is estimated, so the error would be plus minus 0 0.01. So once you write this number, you can easily see what your error range would be because this was your estimated digit, and that's in one hundredth of a place, and that's why the error is plus minus 0 0.01 ml. So we have to be able to compute uh, the numbers and we have to be able to count the how many digits are significant and there are certain rules for counting the significant digits. So the number one rule is that non-zero digits are always significant. Okay, so 22 has two sig digits, 22.3 has three sig digits and they're all non-zero, so they're all significant. When you have the zeros, the things are a little bit uh, complicated. So zeros placed before other digits are not significant. So over here, this is a zero that's placed before other non-zero digits. So that's not significant. So the 46, that's those are the two, that's the number which has two digits are only six digits. Zeros placed between other digits are always significant. So zeros placed between other digits. So here we have two zeros in between the two uh, non-zero digits. So they are significant. So in this case, the whole number has four significant digits. So Zeros placed after other digits but behind a decimal place are significant. So in this case, this zero is after the nine and this is significant. So that means that the number of sig digits in this number is seven point is actually three. Now, of course, this is same as 7.9 as far as the numerical values are concerned, but this has only two sig digits. If you write 7.9000, that would have five sig digits because all of these three zeros are going to be significant. Now, of course, because this, 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 all these numbers are, are uh, same numerically, so to avoid any ambiguity, what we do is we use the scientific notation, and that would indicate basically how many sig digits we have instead of writing this way. So if you write 8.2008 in part 3, this, of course, we don't count. 
this has four six digits. 8.20 to the power 3 has three six digits and 8.2 into the power 3 has only two. So what about 820 20, written like that? Well, this is a little bit ambiguous, okay? Because we don't know whether this zero, the last zero is significant or not. So if this zero is significant, you are better off writing this number as 8.20 into 10 power two, okay? That way it would be clear that this last zero is significant, all right? Uh, what about 8200? Again, it is ambiguous. Uh, if the last two zeros are significant, then you should basically write it like this, 8.200 into 10 power 3. And that way it would be, you know, amply clear uh, whether this is a, these zeros are significant or not. On the other hand, if there are only, there's only one zero that is significant over here, you could write it like this, 8.20 into 10 power 4. And that would make it clear that there's only one zero that is significant over all right, so now let's see how we will employ sig digits in the calculations. So calculations involving multiplication, division, uh, computing the sine, cosine of the numbers. So whenever we have situations where we have to multiply two numbers or divide them or we have to compute their trigonometric or logarithmic function, then the final answer should not have more significant digits than the, the, the input quantity, we want the input quantity that has the least number of sig digits. Okay, so, so essentially the, the one of the input numbers which has the least number of sig digits basically tell you how many sig digits would be reported in your final answer. All right, so let's say we are doing this calculation. This is the same example that we saw before. We want to compute uh, the force on an object where we know the mass, we know the acceleration. So we multiply 2.5 with 1.236. And you know, let me do this uh, on my calculator to see exactly what is reported. So 2.5 times 1.236 gives you 3.09. So actually the answer that you get from the calculator is 3.09, okay? Now, in this case, this has to be rounded to only two digits because the input quantity 2.5 has only two sig digits, this has four. So the final answer cannot have more than two sig digits. And that's why 3.09 has been rounded to 3.1 over here. So the question is, how do we round it? So there are rules for rounding, we'll look at them, okay? What about uh, uh, additions and subtractions? So if you have numbers you will need to add and subtract, the rule is slightly different. It is still a little significant digits, but basically now instead of uh, counting the sig digits in the, in, the, in the least precise input quantity, you will actually look at the number of, uh, least number of decimal places in one of the input quantities, okay? So let's say we want to add 5.67 joules which has two decimal places with 1.1 joule, which has only one decimal place with 0.9378 joules, which has four decimal places, then the final answer will have no more than one decimal place, okay, after the, uh, the, the data, all right? So in this case, if you add them, of course, you will get the numbers uh, three or four digits after the decimal, but you have to round it so that there's only one digit after the decimal. In this case, that's reported as 7.7 joules, which of course would require some rounding as well. So what are the rules for rounding off? There are six rules that we have over here. So we'll start with the first one. If the digit to be dropped is greater than five, okay, so the digit that you're trying to drop, you know how many digits you would have to drop because you would know how many six digits the final answer should have. So if the digit to be dropped is greater than five, then the last retained digit is increased by one, okay? So for example, 12.6 has to be rounded to let's say two digits only. Then you are trying to drop six, okay? Six is more than five, so 12.6 becomes 13. If the digit to be dropped is less than five, okay, the last remaining digit is left as it is. So for example, 12.4, you have to drop uh, four over here, which is less than five. So you will leave the two as it is. So it, it rounds to uh, 12 only for two sig digits. So if the digit to be dropped is five, and if any digit following it is not zero, the last remaining digit is increased by one. So for example, 12.51, if it is to be rounded to two sig digits and you're trying to drop five, and after that there is non-zero digit one, it will be rounded to 13 in this case. If the digit to be dropped is five and is followed only by zeros, then the last remaining digit is increased by one if it is odd, but left as it is if it is even. And this is to ensure that, you know, because there are always be numbers like, like 12.5, 13.5, 14.5, then half the numbers get rounded up, half the get, um, numbers get rounded down, basically. So 11.5, you are trying to drop five so that you have only two digits in the end, and one over here is an odd number, so that becomes 12. 12.5, this is an even number, five is being dropped, so that becomes uh, 12 over here, okay? 
A fifth rule is that whenever you do the rounding, you don't round off progressively. This is a mistake that the students make often. So what you need to do is you need to find out how many signatures you need to have in your final answer and then do the rounding off in just one shot. Okay. So for example, 827.48 needs to be rounded to let's say three signatures. So if it has to be rounded three signatures, that means this is the digit that has to be dropped. All right. So four, which is less than five, that means seven would remain the way it is. So that's so the answer is 827. Uh, but to four sig digits, let's say you want to round it to four sig digits, then you will be dropping eight and uh, you have, which is more than uh, five. So that means it will become 827.5. And if you round it back to the three sig digits from 827.5, then this is five it has to be dropped. Seven is an odd number. So it will be rounded to 828. So rounding it off progressively from five from five numbers to four numbers to three numbers gives you a different answer than what you get if you round it off in one shot. Exact conversion factors have infinite six digits. So we talked about this. So exact conversion factors are the fa conversion factors that you have within the same unit system. So if you are in the USC system and you're going from one unit to another unit in the same in that system, then those conversion factors have infinite six digits. So they don't really constrain your final answer in any way. All right. So here are some examples. Um, round this number to three significant figures. So this has five. So we have to basically you know cut it off over here. Uh, and we have six here, which is more than five. So last number four becomes five. This number needs to be rounded off to two significant figures. So we are going to be dropping this one, which is less than five. So, so this will be basically only 1.6. 2.350 integral power two rounded to two sig figures. So we have to drop five over here. And after that, there is only zero. Three is an odd number. So this will be 2.4. 2.450, we have to drop five. Uh, and this is an even number. So we'll leave it as it is. So that's 2.4. This is a calculation where we have to multiply 2.479 hours with 60 minutes per hour. This conversion factor over here has infinite six digits, so this is not going to constrain it. So the only constraint is, is over here in this particular input figure, which has four six digits. So when you do the calculation, you just need to make sure that you have four six digits. So if you punch in these numbers in calculator, you get 148.74, which is five six digits. We need to round it to four. Uh, four is less than five, so the answer will be 148.7 or you can write it in there in the scientific notation this way. Uh, here's another uh, calculation, four point, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five zeros into 10 point two kilogram. Uh, so this has uh, six uh, significant figures, 2.2046 pound mass per kilogram. This has five significant figures. Now notice that this is going from USC system to the SI system. That means this conversion factor is not exact. That means this particular conversion factor will play a role in determining how many six digits you will report in your final answer. And there are only five over here, so that means their final answer should have no more than five six digits. So if you punch in these numbers in the calculator, um, you would get something which would be you know pretty big, but you will round it off only to five six digits. So, so in, in when you're doing the calculations for your problems, they're, they're usually multi-step calculations. So you have you get multiple answers, you get intermediate answers. So when you do the inter when you get the intermediate answers, you should not round them up. You should retain as many digits as you can. Preferably do all the calculations that cal in, in the calculator or on your computer calculator. Or if you're not doing that way, you are going to write the intermediate answers. Try to retain at least four digits after the decimal, and then do the rounding off only at the very end. So a simple quiz on significant figures. So first one, how many zeros are significant figures in uh, measure mass of uh, this gram? So we're looking for how many zeros are significant. This one is not significant. This one is, this one is. So that's three significant figures. So that's the answer. Uh, correctly rounded, what will be the answer of uh, this? So we have to, this is a subtraction. In, in case of subtraction or addition, we just go by number of decimal places. Uh, least number of decimal places in one of the input quantities, which is three over here. So when we do this, the subtraction, we have to make sure that, you know, that there are only three digits being reported after the decimal, which is the case with uh, option B over here. The number of significant digits in this is at most four, at least exactly three, exactly nine, at least nine, at least four. Well, of course, at least four is the right one because we don't know whether any of these zeros are significant or not. So this is ambiguous, but at least we know that these four uh, numbers are, are significant too. The number of significance in 4900 is, again, this is similar to the previous one. These two numbers, we don't know whether they are significant or not, but at least two are, which is 49. So that's the answer is at least two. 
The number of six figures in this is, well, these two are not significant. These two zeros are one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, because this is, these two zeros are after the decimal. So the answer is six. Number of six digits in this number of students in any class would be infinite because they are exact number. Uh, and that's why infinite six digits. So 3.0 to 12.6. Let me punch this in in my calculator and see what I get. 3 into uh, 12.6, I get 37.8. So this comes out to 37.8. Uh, this has two sig digits, this has four sig digits. So my final answer should have uh, no more than uh, two sig digits. Should have no more than two sig digits. 37.8 will be rounded to uh, 38. Correctly rounded, what is 2.5 times 3.8192? Again, let me put this in my calculator and see what I get. 3.5 times 3.8192 is 9.548, okay? And this has only two sigs, so my final answer should have no more than uh, two significant figures. So that means we have to drop this four over here, which is less than five, so the answer would be simply 9.5. Last one, correctly rounded the result of uh, 23.1 gram minus 22 gram divided 25.1 minus this is what? So when you do this subtraction, uh, you have to make sure that you have to go by the least number of significant, least number of uh, uh, decimal places. So you have four over here, so that's not an issue. Uh, and then over here, we have 25.10 minus 25.0. So again, you go by the, uh, the number of decimal places. And then you do the division of the resulting uh, answer. And when you do the division, you again look at how many sig digits there are. So this is more like a mixed calculation problem because you're doing subtraction and, and addition as well as uh, uh, division. Okay, so in this case, the answer comes out to 11.